Groovy greetings from the Gnostic Arrogator to the main professor, and any of the sneaks who happen to peek at this channel from time to time. Yep, it's me. Back to ramble, back to the master of ramble himself, Mr. John Lamb Lash, the man of many self-designations. How have you been? Let's talk about that later. Your latest talk on DWW43 was highly compelling. That is, compelling me to cross-examine some of the points and references you mention. To warn you, this monologue of mine is going to be a doozy. I request you listen carefully, and if you must take notes, try to make sure you quote me accurately. In the response you gave to my first irrigation, you made several errors in the notes you were referring to, which is less than conductive to a productive conversation. That is, if you take me up on this offer once more. Moving along now, in the Dakini Weather Watch Talk 43 about conundrums and quandaries, you make two separate references to two individuals, Stefan Lanka and Anton Parks. Let me review what you said about Lanka. In the talk you listened to of his, Lanka makes two claims you bring up. Attention, yes, two claims. Two. Not one. The first I shall paraphrase from your paraphrase. Our understanding of the genome is incorrect. Period. That in itself is one claim. So who is the we in the pronoun our? Do you think Lanka is including you, Lash, and me, Lichka, and anyone who happens to be listening? Let's not assume as much, but entertain what I reasonably surmise. Lanka is referring to the scientific community. Lanka himself is a doctor on the open stage of scientific debate. So my inference is that when he says our understanding, he means specifically the generally accepted scientific theories. Lanka is probably not referring to what you, Lash, mean when you use the term genome. It is probably unlikely, even if someone on Nemeta had correspondence with him, that he includes the notions of your work in his general presentations of scientific research and discussion. Tuck. The next claim you reference is that he outright denies, well, let me paraphrase, Lanka says, the genome does not exist. This is no cause for alarm, Mr. Lash. He is neither a mythophrenic investigator and you are not a biologist. What he is referring to, so I infer, is the scientific theory of the genome, rather what the theory purported by the likes and ilks of Darwin and Co. entails. He is not at all referring to the Anthropos genome, generated in the galactic core and nested in the Orion Nebula, the Amber Stain. Is it not fair to say that when you adopted the term genome, you were investigating a matter that was not identical to what biologists in the lab, under microscopes and with other archontic devices, were theorizing about? To add further clarification, I find it wonderful that you came to a sort of resolution regarding Lanka's claims. Lash, you basically said go back to nucleic acid, which is the N.A. of DNA. Lanka never claims that DNA does not exist. The theory of genome does not equal DNA. No more than a book is equal to a word. Yes, a book is composed of words along with other verbal structures like sentences, paragraphs, chapters, and narrative, but book and word are two distinct things. So while the theory of a genome that includes DNA may be incorrect, nowhere does Lanka imply that DNA itself is non-existent. In fact, if you have genuinely listened to him, he seems to have a great insight on DNA and other biological phenomena. Am I done here? Yes, but not quite. Next stop is Anton Parks. Let me preface this by referring to two words that you tend to use in this talk and elsewhere that may not be an accurate fit. The words you use, Mr. Lash, are verification and confirmation. 
I propose a more apt term would be supports or supporting evidence. For instance, when you detected the atmospheric shield in 2014, shortly after sharing that intel with a couple of friends, you came across an article that presents the discovery by scientists of a force field surrounding the Earth, which baffled those very scientists. Your immediate reaction was to use the word confirm, as in, this scientific article confirms my observation. Does it? To me, confirmation is a sturdy process requiring more work than mere browsing. And when it comes to these investigations into unknown territory, you often have to have more than one piece of evidence to reach a full-blown confirmation. You've already described the mechanic in the differences between proof and evidence. Proof is composed of evidence, but no single piece of evidence constitutes proof, in most cases anyway. What's more, though while it's possible a single piece of evidence can constitute some proof, true confirmation would rely on your own ability to reproduce the experiment and the results yourself to investigate what is backing the claim and not just taking it unscrutinized. It would be far more accurate to claim, this scientific article supports my observations. Take now the left field PP1 claim from a, from a guy you describe as a scholar of the Anunnaki scenario, a mythologist. The problem I take is that even in the audio you briefly play, they make no hard claims. Rather, they offer hypothesis. Could this molecule be responsible for blocking human memory? Okay, that's a hypothesis. Now show me the chain of evidence. Show me the extensive research. Well, first show me that you've isolated this molecule, as one can isolate MSG or THC and other compounds. Then show me tests conducted on rats, show me studies of human neurochemistry that do not conflate correlation to causation. Here is an example of conflating correlation to causation. When you have a sore throat, bacteria proliferates. That is to say, there is a higher amount of bacteria there. That is correlation. The conflation is when the doctors claim that the bacteria itself is causing the sore throat. German New Medicine presents evidence that this is not the case, not to mention the failure of medical science to demonstrate infectability by any microorganism according to Koch's postulates. So, they may well have conducted experiments on blood samples that show higher levels, and let's put higher in quotes, quote, higher levels, unquote, of this dubious PP1 chemical in folks that have whatever memory loss syndrome I can only imagine, dementia and such. Well, I ask, is it nominally higher? Like, 1% higher? Or a fraction of a percent? Or is it 200% higher? Or 500% higher? 5 times? 10 times higher? That contributes to all difference in the veracity of these scientific claims. All right, let's look at the claim, but don't be so ready to take it on board as fact, especially based solely from the poetic way they are attempting in the intro of that video to persuade you. Beware of persuasive fluff. Oh, could this be? Could my suspicions be true? Bold on prose, but shy on the raw data. You and I already know about this as seasoned investigators. At the most, you can say, this new info supports my claim about the archontic shunt. But listen more carefully. I hear something entirely else happening here. Gaia.com and the likes of David Icke and others have already proven notorious for plagiarizing or parodying your works. Even Stephen Wybrow and Errol Kaya with their Gnostic takeover meme. Uh, for fuck's sake, I just pulled up his YouTube to find the meme he's been pushing as the banner for his movement, and here's the title of a recent vid. The Gnostic Investigation, Part 3, Taking Down the Pado satanic Criminal Network. 
For fuck's sake, you coined that term, Mr. Lash. Gnostic investigation. When you did the videos for Mandela Effect Decoded. All's well. These plagiarists or parodiers aren't worth shitting about. I reference them only to show that when unoriginal tads want to sell a spin on a narrative, they will often take work such as yours, using the same phraseology and terms, because they are incapable of producing anything novel. That's what I'm suspecting with this Anton Parks fellow. Could his presentation be nothing more than ripping what you've already presented to the world in the complex matter of the archontic intrusion, which includes your notion of the shunt, and put his own spin on it? It seems more like, to me, that he repeats your claims in a way that makes it sound like they are his own personal discoveries. That he references a named molecule is but a stock scientific gimmick. Name a substance. Call it graphene. Call it conyd steintein. Here it's called PP1. And suddenly your claims are all scientific. It's another scapegoat in the form of a dubious, minuscule entity that you cannot confirm exists or not. And did you see how it worked? You got all excited there, Mr. Lash. Just by him saying the word molecule triggers an imprinted reaction under dogmatic belief in most cases, the good faith extended to science by common tads who consider themselves not as smart, the good faith they extend to these doctor scholars for the expertise that the audience cannot make their own. In fact, in the video, the narrator blurts, we cannot explain how this works. A telltale sign of pseudoscience. It's more than cogent that you uploaded that old talk from Dog Zen, the bona fides, because the instruction can, yeah, it can aptly apply here. Do not extend good faith to doctors. Do not extend good faith to degreed scholars. Do not extend good faith to self-proclaimed experts. Examine their claims. Look at the state of their lives, if they so dare to present themselves transparently. Scrutinize and verify, if possible, and where someone claims something you cannot personally falsify or test, you may be in for a ride. Now, regarding the title of this talk, you and I are browsers. You browse the internet. Lately, it's feeling more and more like a net, a tool of ensnarement. I'm sure you limit your usage of the net, the so-called information superhighway, as do I with my personal methods. I have no YouTube subscriptions as such, but I do check out the channels featuring JLL's work, which is his own, Ginny's, and Hans's. I will also check from time to time what George Henry is uploading on the Sophianic Animism Odyssey page, but never listen to them. Only recently have they started talking about topics other than common law. Then there are the subscriptions of M.E.D. and Ginny. I've investigated the likes of Terrence Pop more for the sake of entertainment rather than education. I find most of the time his MGTOW-oriented comedic ramblings are quite off-point and only worsen the gender rift. Bernie Tree had magnificent comments about how other black tads blow up the issue of racism, which is a non-issue in her view as a healthy, nature-oriented black woman, but she has stopped uploading lately. I checked out enough videos from David Irving, who seems to have done more physical historical research than anyone else, having interviewed actual characters who were alive and involved in the event of World War II, and of course Ernst Zundel, and then what uh, that white South African bloke whose name escapes me. I find the English talks by Stefan Lanka delightfully refreshing, although at times naive. He doesn't have to be doom and gloom and serious. That would take away from his authentic character. But whomever I seek out, I do not, I am not devoted to. The largest share of my attention goes to John Lamb Lash. 
yet it frustrates me when he brings up various bits of info external to a paradigm centered around the FGS. This is primarily why I safely disregard anyone else. No one is speaking from the point of view of the narrative. They all speak in total ignorance of it, which includes complete ignorance of Sophia's very presence upon which they stand, upon which they are born, and in every instant immersed. I disregard gurus whose goal is either to dissolve into a non-animal state of existence, to become one with the void, or worse, for man to become a sort of god, or for the planet to evolve into what they call a, quote, 5D, unquote, pure sphere of light, not aware that the earth already is a luminous body. And when it comes to those who want to hop on a rocket or re relocate through meditation to some other planet, I almost wish that they could do so just so that they can leave this planet alone and stop absorbing everyone's attention into an alien fetish fantasy. This is also why I don't watch most television or movies. Anime, the Marvel comics, featuring Iron Man Tony Stark, of whom Elon Musk is a real-life phony caricature, and Thor from another planet, be it Star Wars or Superman, Jurassic Park, E.T., or yet another Indiana Jones versus the evil Germans. All that crap is loaded with Earth-hating overtones. But I do, I do enjoy my share of entertainment. I'll give you one example. Doreen Tipton, whom Caridwen linked back when she did a four-part radio Doreen isolation station bit. Brit humor often misses the mark, despite the likes of Monty Python's fame and fanaticism. On that, Monty Python is nothing but faggotry propaganda. It's disgustingly obvious and not funny. Doreen, on the other hand, is both dry and outrageous. She doesn't have to flip her tits and shriek and squeal like the Python boys and almost every other English comedian. She takes deadpan snark to a level of mastery, her own straight man, which is a term in a particular comedic duo. Think Abbott of Abbott and Costello. Whilst, those simple, whilst through simple editing techniques... Props and clever backdrops, she exudes outrageous subtlety. Take this bit under 10 seconds from her recent video on climate change, what she calls the new name for global warming. After talking about some unfortunate graphs, she shows some footage of a blue sky with wispy white clouds and sunshine peering through while she delivers this line. No one can argue that the climate is indeed changing. Suddenly a lightning flash, and the sky becomes dark gray and rainy. There it goes again, she says offhand. Doreen is not, however, teaching me anything that I don't already know. She doesn't have to. I've seen some Nemeta members post links to their favorite self-help coaches. I don't need them. I don't look at Lash as a coach, as a college professor. I view him as a fellow scholar. Yes, the one who introduced me to this insight, which I had to go out and witness for myself. Lash himself cannot do the work for you. Verifying the presence of Gaia Sophia in and as the world event herself is a discipline you come to, and how lucky you are to come to it. There is a trade-off to the state of enlightenment, however, if you would call it that, you feel often like a total anathema, but I feel the feeling goes both ways. I hold contempt not only for anyone who blindly believes the lies of the Zenash, who stubbornly remain ignorant of the truth of the wars against Germany. I also have sweeping indifference for anyone that is blind to the living presence of the earth, whether they acknowledge her as the wisdom goddess or not. I'm tired of hearing their half-truths. Been so for years now. Although I will show that I can analyze certain archontic media, such as films, cartoons, and video game narratives, thus far I see absolutely no other work of fiction that holds a candle to the FGS. I get baffled every time I, I, there's a new poster, 
And mind you, most of you are fairly new to Lash's work. When they post some pretentious scholar or blog and remark, this so much resonates with Lash's work. I open those links and see no mention of the Earth Goddess, how she gives you life and sustains the generation of beauty in every natural process on the planet. Not even a hint. I do wonder if some of you are just JLL fanboys and fangirls. I've made that accusation, but I know that's not my business. Since Lash has come to YouTube, he has acquired a new audience. YouTuber subscribers. Here I pull up the subscriptions page of Hans to show you what I mean. Dozens upon dozens upon dozens of subscriptions of every subject from biology to politics to cryptocurrency. A good portion of these YouTubers are some flavor of New Age spiritual guru. No offense to the guy. I just strongly disagree that anyone needs that or really benefits from it. Look at yourself. Look at me! I have no fucking subscriptions. I do browse YouTube, but learn almost nothing new from it alone. YouTubers are just people. Simple tads. When it comes to non-spiritual matters such as food recipes or off-grid building techniques, even those I don't look at. The last time was around when I made my first video referencing that My Self-Reliance guy, and I took it more as entertainment. And I admit first and foremost it's entertainment, not education. Even Nemeta forums have become such. Occasionally I read a brilliant post. Quite rare it happens. The other times I find grists for my gripe mill, stuff to scrutinize and criticize, so much that I've been dubbed as having a snark remark constellation. Logging on the internet is like watching monster trucks. Welcome to the Information Superstation High Speed Rumble! This yeah. Sunday, Sunday, yeah. Sunday. Monster truck sport cars drive over and under the dog pile. Blind racers who think they know it all. Spam. Bombarding info. Watches each of them try not to drown in the millions of pamphlets in the form of link sharing. Here comes the info dump truck with a post that links to dozens of two hour long chit chats. And the audience roars. Great pose, so much resonance. Yes, they keep coming back for more. Damn it, they are the dirtiest information whores, and they know the game. With that remark of snark, I sign off and bid you more of the same. Uh, uh.